can the mining sector do amid the new administration's continued crackdown? That is the big question at this year's mining conference happening right now in Pasay. Our reporter Shyla Francisco is there with the latest. Shyla, take it away. Today's the first day of the mining conference here in Marit, Manila, and everyone is eager to learn more about what the mining firms and stakeholders have to say about the future of the mining industry under the Duterte administration. So far, since the start of the term, 10 mining operations have been suspended. We have here with us Mr. Ron Isidoro, Vice President of Chamber of Mines of the Philippines, to shed light on the matter. Sir, um, 10 mining operations have been suspended since the start of the Duterte administration. Did we see this affect the industry, I mean, with a change in metal prices or a short supply. Well, it's true that uh, several nickel operations have been suspended, but uh, their overall impact on uh, mineral production has been rather minimal. It's less than 10%, I think. Um, but that being said, the, the signal sent overseas is that the, the Duterte administration is keen on uh, enhancing regulation and monitoring for all mining operations. So it has, uh, well, it has sent shockwaves of concern regarding the supply of nickel. As you may know, uh, the Philippines is currently the biggest uh, supplier of nickel ore to China. Okay, sir, a lot of mining um, firms are listed companies. And um, since the start of the administration, we've, we've seen a lot of drops in mining stocks. How do you think um, the mining firms can make the shares more appealing to long-term investors? I understand Global Fair Nickel has already increased its capital stocks. Well, the, 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 only, the biggest thing that will attract investors, definitely, is uh, the resource. And the Philippines really has that resource. No? We are one of the world's best sources for gold, copper, and nickel. That said, uh, investor uh, confidence is still a function of how the government intends to move forward with the mining industry. Right now, there is, an, uh, there is ongoing... Uh, a pro an audit by the department to see if all mining companies are complying with uh, environmental and social development regulations. Now we're hoping that once this audit is complete, it would have shaken out um, the scalawags within industry and that those that have passed this audit will be allowed to finally full go full blast with their operations and for pending permits to finally be processed and release. Okay, sir, in relation to that, 34 billion in projects are already in the pipeline in the next six years. Should we expect delays given the regulations set by the DNR and even the administration? Well, the president has said that he is not against mining. In fact, he is for responsible mining and insists that all mines do their work using highest standards and the best technology, even citing Australia and Canada. No? And uh, we are doing that. The large-scale mines in the country are all using best technology. Um, so it's really now just up to government how they plan to grow this industry and connect it downstream you know, with the processing and the manufacturing sectors. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Again, that was Ron Residoro, Vice President of Chamber of Mines of the Philippines. Later, we will be expecting to hear from the Mines and Geosciences Bureau Director, Mario Luis Asinto, and also speeches from other mining firms such as Felix Mining and Oceana Gold. We'll also be expecting to hear a panel discussion on the global outlook of mining and prices. Reg? All right, thanks very much for your reporting. Shiloh Francisco, live at the Marriott in Pasay City for the Mining 2016 Annual Conference.